Anybody who takes an active interest in lighting herbs should be aware of Roman Murin. Having retired from work with Wesson Helicopters, Roman now applies his electrical engineering expertise to herpticulture and is one of the most knowledgeable people in the field. I visited him for a weekend to see what he was getting up to, and in this video I'll be sharing that with you. Whilst I was there, I also traded a couple of my reptiles for some of his, so through the video try and work out which animals will be joining my collection. So guys, today what we're going to be doing is doing a tour of Roman Muring's house. Now, if you were a member of the Reptile Lighting Group or Advancing Herpetological Husbandry, you should know who Rom is. Um, he's a fantastic reptile keeper. He's got a couple of lizards, he's got some turtles. Um, he's also taking my Chinese leopard snakes or twin spot rat snakes. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is going around and showing you all of his collection, um, what he does, how he keeps things. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so as I continue making my way down this garden, here we have the one and only Poppy. Um, now, Roman Muri, here he is. And uh, time to take a look at some turtles. Come on in, you're welcome. Having a good hard look for some turtles there. There's one. Oh wow, now look at that. There's a male. So what is he? I this know is a male terrapine, Carolina, Carolina. Mm -hmm. He's just been in the pond, cooled out, and he's just been out, come out and, and hidden. Oh wow. So um, my viewers in the States are going to be probably going to be familiar with box turtles, but um, for us in uh, the UK, they're a, they're a specialty, because um, obviously we don't have these things here. Aha, so here's food for the fellas. This little baby, which is my spotted turtle, he has no such compunction. Now, um, spotted turtles, again, those aren't um, a species that most people are that familiar with. Um, no, the spotteds come from, again, uh, North America, mm -hmm. and their range is starting um, near Ottawa, Canada, mm -hmm. and they go south all the way through to Florida, I want to say, but certainly all across our seaboard, but they're in patches um, all around the lakes. Mm -hmm. So and so again, quite a, they'll tolerate a range of conditions, which yeah, is why they're, yeah, yeah. even in a you know, an uh, outdoor pond. And these are very, very hardy. I mean, don't forget, the Canada is, there they go, they've, they're discovering the food. And I'm treating, treating these as, um, I, I don't know if I can pick them up, because mm -hmm. I don't need to. I think I know how many I've got, and I think I've, I've fed them all. Now I'm gonna give some food to the to the box circles, because they know where to find you. Mm -hmm even though they're scaredy cats and uh, also the shinosaurus oh yeah the shinosaurus in here the chinese crocodile lizard so uh, this um setup like it's not your typical thing that you see people keeping no. reptiles in so um what exactly have we got going on here so it's i wanted to make something different and i was quite interested on de in how domes work so, mm -hmm. I made a few prototypes, and I'll show you later, which worked. So then I used, this is 10 millimeter twin wall polycarbonate. Yeah. And each triangle is a particular shape, and they're all joined with an edge section plastic, which is which this thing. Mm -hmm. So, the triangles fit, slot into the plastic, and then as you build them up, it goes round and round and round, and it becomes stronger. I put Got in yeah. two air conditioning vents. Mm -hmm which are thermostatically controlled. Oh, so... Um, so it opens up and shuts down with temperature. Oh, that's remarkable. I and like uh, that. <laughs> and so all the sunlight comes in, except for the UV, but these windows here, mm -hmm. at the bottom, are UV transmitting glass, which is... The Got yeah. white. that's these down here. So the animals, if they want to, they can bask, uh, and that's where they lay their eggs as well. Mm -hmm, down and here. they have laid their eggs in here. Oh, wow. Um, 
and quite often I catch the little devils laying in there um, and I dig them out and put them in the incubator. So you don't let them incubate outdoors naturally? Yeah, they have done. Yeah. They have done and they've hatched and I've come back from holiday and I found little babies in the ponds, mm -hmm. which was a surprise. A nice one. <laughs> a nice one. But I also used to have eye lizards in here. Oh, did you? I did. Um, however, I came back from holidays and I dug up the pond and the eggs were open and obviously the animal was gone. Yeah. And I realised that the you know, eye lizard had helped themselves. The yeah, so it, it's, it's, you've got to be careful with it. Uh... It wasn't long before the eye lizard disappeared. Mm -hmm. So they had to go. Yeah, which is a shame, side lizards are nice. Yeah, um, they were lovely. But one thing I, I should ask as well is, obviously um, there's a door here, and that's uh, the big wide world, but you aren't worried about um, any of these fellas escaping at all? No. Ignoring the dog which is allowed no. to escape. But look, <laughs> this this round edge mm -hmm. stops them climbing out. Yeah, and that that's perfectly sufficient for... Yeah. Yeah. I think I've only had a couple ever get out and I fixed where that was and I didn't do it again. So um, as well these um, these structures here, the ponds, these are things you've built yourself, what are they made from? Uh, uh, wall cladding. Wall cladding, yeah. And they just screw together, what I've got is a, an L-shaped bracket, mm -hmm. you can see how that screwed up with yeah, this I one. Yeah, I get you, there'll be something on the inside and then there and it's bolted. On the fit. inside is a liner. Mm -hmm. You see the liner? Yep, we can see that. And then I just clip it over the top mm -hmm. and I screw down through there into the twin wall mm -hmm. and put the pipe in place. So it's, it's basically it's a nice simple system that works. Dead easy and cheap. So what's going on with this one? I've, I've got a whole band male which I've been growing on. Um, is this another spotted turtle? It's just one spotted turtle and this is where I put my youngsters. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's important that you have proper isolation between animals. Yeah. Uh, and if you're breeding animals then you sh shouldn't really put them with mm -hmm. other animals if you're selling them because quarantine. Yeah. If, if you've done that then you can sell your animals on and still have some sort of level of integrity of safety mm -hmm. when you sell that animal you know you're yeah. passing on a disease mm -hmm. um, and that's that's quite important i think generally for the hobby and it is to me so that when i sell my animals i know that i know they're not carrying disease yeah and I'll, I'll point out to people the polydome we were in earlier is over there so we've got a good aim um, yeah and if i've got a new animal i've got on animals if i've handled it i try and remember to wash my hands mm -hmm. And in here I've got three holdback females. Oh, I lost this. <laughs> um, and these these are special. And I've got I've got a lot of love from these. So what I'll do is I'll do that. and see if they come. The, what I've done here is I've got, it's, it's drier and it's warmer. So this comes off. That's very good. And so this is warmer now. And, and this is going to be like an egg laying site yeah, for them, I presume. And I have had it. I've got eggs in the incubator that have been laid here. Oh, brilliant. And, and what I do is I've got a little, I do a little groove like this. Mm -hmm. Till the, the soil. If the groove disappears, it gives me clues that they've been digging. Ah, that's very clever. And does it give you an idea of where as well? Can you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. If, if the groove is being disturbed, then mm -hmm. that's where the digging's been going on. So we've got another big one here. Um, I think is this, um, Turtles in here, as well as some Padarchis. The wall lizard, Sicula, Campestris. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, these, uh, so they're under the rocks, and these these rocks here. Yeah. These lids slide up and down. 
Yeah, that's good. So it's it's just yeah. how and um, what have we got at the edge to allow them to slide. Well, it's just to end with a washer on the end. Oh, so it's just a really simple. There's no yeah. no need no, for runners no, or no no because this is the top of the you know these wall cladding that I like. Yeah, they've got more this, wall cladding. They've got this lovely slidey surface. Mhm. Mm so these come over and the bits of glass over there. Yeah. They fit on there. So for mm -hmm. the winter. Ah, you can cut the whole thing yeah. off, and then yeah. they're not getting snowed in, and yeah, and I also do a little experiment. Oh yeah, you know my little Bluetooth buttons. Mhm. Mm I've had that in there for a while now, and I'm measuring the temperature of the button of the soil underneath. Yep, so basically what we've got here, this thing, it's like a sort of um, Bluetooth thermometer. It, Does that it, one do it, humidity it, as well? Yep, it's the data. No, it's no good because it's in a plastic bag. Got you, yeah. And humidity will kill it. So what have we got? This is a male, Carolina Carolina, four toed. Mm -hmm. um, I got these from Chema in, uh, near Barcelona, Valencia in Spain. Mm -hmm. We travelled up with Paul and um, we picked up some of these and this is one of them this is one of my males i'm quite pleased with him got a nice face the one in the um the greenhouse has got a whiter face but this one's grown more quickly nice shape nice oval shape being outside and in, in uh, outside and in here mm -hmm. all his life and really grown nicely you can see he's been in the pond spends a lot of time in the pond yeah <laughs> they love the pond and uh, I'm going to put him back there. Notice I'm not jerking him, I'm moving him slowly. Yep. And not flipping him upside down. He's obviously not, not happy being given attention. He's used to Poppy. He's not worried about Poppy. He's, he's more worried about... He's camera shy. Cameras, yeah. I'll leave the tomatoes on the floor. Mm -hmm. Because the terrapins find them attractive but also the slugs find them attractive and the terrapins find the slugs attractive so basically everybody's attracted <laughs> to everybody else <laughs> now I always water them before I feed them it's a cue um, it's a cue in the wild as well for them to start coming out start foraging and yeah, things I like the humidity it's quite warm in here so this builds up the humidity and um, We've got plenty of hidey holes and privacy, so it's a it's a low stress environment, mm -hmm. which obviously is very important for captive reptiles. It's a thing people often overlook, but um, if the animals are stressed, they're not going to do well. No. However, you keep them. And so, a spotted a spotted turtle in there, one of yep. my holdbacks, and uh, she'll come out. Maybe she'll pop her head out if she's. If she's good, and these will get and the cues and come out and, and get fed. And uh, there's box um, box turtles as well in there. There's there's, there's female box turtles, just four females, mm -hmm. five females, four females. I don't know, I've lost count. Um, and that's it. So there's no male. I've, I've had a male in there. I've seen mating, so they're good for next year, I think. And of course the watering helps the plants grow. And uh, while we're here, um, it's worth pointing out to people that this isn't just ordinary glass, is oh, it? Oh, that's true, yeah. The, uh, the This glass that I'm watering here mm -hmm. is low iron glass. And this plastic I'm watering here is UV transmitting glass. And that's the only glass that I deal with UV in the, in the greenhouse. As well as the animals he keeps outdoors, Roman's got an 8x2x2 two two foot testing vivarium with multiple basking sites. Whilst I was there, we ran an experiment in this vivarium which held Roman's collared lizards. Okay, so what I've got is the makings of an experiment. Yeah. And what I wanted to do is to see how animals react to different lamps. And so I wondered how to do that. We talked about it, how it might be done with, with others. Mm -hmm. And I, I've set upon an eight foot tank with three identical positions. Yeah. Three heated 
and temperature controlled vascular spots. So that's these um, the square things. The rocks, yeah, here. yeah, yeah. And there, it's a rock with a, a heat mat embedded in it mm -hmm. and temperature controlled. And you can see the temperature on the three. Yeah. I've been see it's all oh, pretty close. 36, 36 35, 35 and 35 and, 35 and a half. So they're all the same so that the temperature of the rock isn't the issue. Mm -hmm. Then each position has got the same lighting arrangement and I can yeah. change the lamps. So at the minute what, what's happening? What have we got on? On a minute on this experiment I've just got a tungsten, a 50 watt tungsten halogen lamp. Yep, yeah, that's this one. Yep. Yeah. This one is a heat projector from Arcadia, 50 yep, watts. that fella there. And, and then over on this end... I've got a 40 watt LED which lamp, is the... spot lamp. Yeah. So they're all about the same power, mm -hmm. consume power. Yep, which is why we're getting the same temperature. And don't, and don't, let, um, don't let that confuse you. Um, yes, that is an LED, but visible light warms stuff up too. So... Uh, which I've talked about in other videos. We won't go into it here, but uh, yeah. Now um, we've also got, it's worth pointing out, um, there is the same UV lamp in each location here. So basically the choice for the lizards is not depending on the UV. It's about the other stuff, the infrared from the tungsten halogen or the deep heat projector, or do they just want visible light? Which is what this lovely male's getting here. Now, uh, what is the clock for? Well, the clock's a reference time. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking a photograph every 30 seconds of the vivarium. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that for the duration of the day. Mm -hmm. When I've uh, finished the day, all those photographs are going to st get stitched together into a movie. Yeah. And so when I run the movie, I can tell where the animals are by looking at the clock. Mm -hmm. and referencing their position to time. Right. Because at the same time, I've got a data logger running, mm -hmm. which is measuring the temperatures in all of these. Yeah, so you're going to have, basically you're going to have footage where you can say, where is an animal at any given time of the day, know what the temperature of the surface is, you know the lamps, basically you're controlling an experiment, and they're going to give you the answer. Absolutely, and at every and then I shall analyse the data by counting every ten minutes where there's a lizard, mm -hmm. and then do a count of how many lizards visited which position during the course of the day. And I found from previous experiments, not only do I see a preference, but that preference may change in the course of the day. Mm -hmm. So there may be on one lamp in the morning, on the same lamp in the evening. Mm -hmm. and another lamp during the course of the day. Right, so it's not just about which lamp is best, it's about which lamp is best when. Absolutely, and I've done this dozens and dozens of times now, mm -hmm. but the big question that was raised somewhere on a forum was, should I have an LED, should I have a tungsten halogen, or should I have a heat projector? And I didn't know the answer, so I let the lizards choose, and that's what we're doing. Now, how are you going about, um measuring the temperatures in here because obviously if you're if you've got different lamps you aren't dimming that led on a thermostat are you no in fact none of the lamps are controlled on a thermostat no the the, the temperature of the basking spot is controlled by the amount of energy i put into it mm -hmm. i don't measure how hot it is i measure how much power is doing that and i control it on these dials which control they're a dimmer controller mm -hmm. so they control each of the, the dimmable lamps and I, it just so happens that they all balance out mm -hmm. to be the same temperature because they're the same power if it gets too hot I do use a thermostat and I use that to run the fans which cool the system uh -huh. so what um, obviously there's um, little computer fans in here, one above each basking spot, am I right? Yeah, they're and, entirely symmetrical. And is this, um, this is an inkbird thermostat running these fans? Yep. Yeah. Is, is that, um, what sort of thermostat is it? That's, it's just a thermostat, it's an on-off thermostat. On-off, okay. And the, sens the sensor's in, the w in there, in there. Mm -hmm. and so when the air temperature reaches 28 or so, mm -hmm. the, pump, the, uh, the fan kicks in, 
and cools each of the spots equally because each of the spots each of the spots have got an air vent yeah so we've got we've got a vent here and then running up through the inside of the enclosure up up there somewhere you can see oh There's just air about vents up there. another vent and that goes, this, this white thing, is this a piece of guttering? It's a bit of guttering sealed at the ends and it sucks the air out and pushes it out into the room. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Most excitingly, the collared lizards had laid eggs some weeks before I arrived and these hatched over the course of my weekend visit. Okay, here <laughs> we go Joe, it's a little incubator. Yup. I'm running it at 29 degrees. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I move it, the, uh, the fogger comes on. You can see the fog and the green light. Yep, and just down there. What we've got in here, hatched this morning, is some beautiful baby collards. And uh, three eggs, so therefore there should be three babies in there. And three, four eggs. Anyway, there's one there, there's some probably hiding under the... Oh, it's quite perky. We'll check whether he's got a yolk sack later on. But he doesn't, he's not moving like he's got a yolk sack. Ah, and we might be able to move yeah. him to the fifth with the other um, babies. Those eggs are not hatched, and three of them have gone off because the incubator failed. Are these collards as well? No, these are spotted turtles, mm -hmm. and these are spotted turtles. I'm right. Tr I'm trying a different way of keeping them, of different hatch arrangements here. Now, what these these colored these, things? What are they? These are Bluetooth buttons. Oh, look at that! He's quite perky, and they they will tell me the temperature and humidity for each of those containers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I can I can give you a link to the where I got them from later. So basically, what they're doing for you is without having to open this box or disturb things, you can just get your phone out or whatever and know what the temperature is right there yeah. what the humidity yeah. is yeah. and you haven't bothered any eggs no. nothing there we go so we know which ones they are because they're the ones at 28.5 degrees so khaki one we said mm -hmm. that's a 28.5 100% humidity we set up the hatchling coloured lizards in the vivarium and watched them take the first feed Another part of what Roman does is testing ways of measuring things. When I visited, he was trying out a method of measuring the temperature of a false rock slab. Okay, just a really simple experiment. Heat mat, yep. operated by a cheap £10 ink bird. Fantastic bits of kit, dead reliable, and I've got dozens of them. That's a thermostat. That's a thermostat, on yep. off. Just that. Polystyrene tube, and in the tube, I have a sensor which measures how hot it is. Mm -hmm. That sensor controls a the thermostat. Yeah. So, whatever I set to, I know that this won't ever get hotter than that. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying is I've got a tile yep. with my sand and PVA glue mix on it. Mm -hmm. So this is basically it's a solid a solid this tile. Is, this is solid. This weighs about half a kilogram, maybe more. Yep. So it's heavy, and I just stuck a temperature sensing aquarium temperature sensor. Just yeah, a quick one. This is the thing that like you get and you put it on the glass of an yep. aquarium. I've got one at home. So what I did is I just smoothed it out, mm -hmm. glued it on, and I'm just seeing how how well it reacts because it might be a good way, a, a very 
cheap way of seeing how um, how hot your rocks is. Yeah, because I mean, any any rock or whatever, you could just take one of these, slap it on, and I suppose you'd have to consider how the heating of the lamp affected the reading of yeah. that versus. Yeah, but but that's how hot it is. Mm -hmm. um, and once you set your lamp up. You don't need a thermostat or anything. You just look at the strip, and providing it's within five, five, four, five degrees, mm -hmm. you're good to cook. You know, <laughs> it's now I've got three different kinds of temperature sensing to make sure they all stick up, and I've got that one on the thermostat. Mm -hmm. I've got this one, which is a cheapo. That's saying thirty-one point four. That's saying thirty-one point two. That's saying thirty-two. They're all. They're near enough. Yeah, and what's that saying? That's saying 30. It's only just saying 30 because I've lifted it off and it got cool, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was when we yeah. first came in here, it was on 30. So, I reckon that's good to go. It's yeah. A dead simple way of doing it. What you could do is if you had another kind of sensor, is have a tube in this when you make them, mm -hmm. and some of the sensors fit in there. And that's what the tube's for. Yeah, which I think is something a big I've, fat tube I might as well. have shown before. And, and you know, I could maybe control the temperature of this by putting this thermostat in here, if it fits. Mm -hmm. So now, with that in there, I'm controlling the temperature of the mat to bring the temperature of this yeah. to the temperature set here. So I'm not controlling the temperature of the mat, I'm controlling the temperature of this mm -hmm. using the mat. And that's another experiment. In fact, what I'll do, as we're speaking, I'll leave this in here and see what the hell happens. Now as we sign off from this video, I would like to give a personal massive thank you both to Ron and to the rest of his family because they all made me feel incredibly welcome while I stayed for the weekend. Um, and it was bloody good. I mean, we did lots of other stuff than what I showed in the video. We went out and um, we did some birding. We went out and I saw my first wild British reptiles. Yes, I have never actually seen them. They just don't live in the parts of the country where I'm from. So getting to see my first adders, grass snakes, and even, even smooth snakes. And uh, we saw slow worms too. It was just, it was a bloody brilliant time and a lot of effort was put into it. So thanks for that. But anyway, next up my channel I will be making a video talking about the new reptiles that I got and their enclosure. And then after that I will be showing you Char the Bearded Dragon's new vivarium because he had to move out of his old one in order to house the new reptiles. So there's plenty going on at the minute and if you don't want to miss that then definitely do subscribe. But for today, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example and I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye guys.